seeing you. Um, it's good to be here. I've got a bit of a jet lag, came from London. So, um, yeah, quite a long. Um, I'm not going to read from that book anymore, because um, but that's great, thanks for that. Um, I've got a new one coming out in November, um, it's called Heritage Aesthetic, so I'm going to read from this, I think, for a few minutes and then we'll call it that. Um, yeah, so when I go into these projects, my thinking around them is I usually begin with questions. I kind of feel that you get further with a question than what you do with some kind of note. And so the book kind of began with thinking about my family from Cyprus and it's a kind of island that's always confused me even up until this day. So I wanted to kind of look at, not repeat myself in what I did with the last book, but kind of put the lens somewhere else with this one. So the idea was how did the British see us when they got to Cyprus in 1887 when it got taken over from the Ottomans. And so I kind of went into one track and then the second thing was the idea of a family what does family mean? Like I'm a bit obsessed with the idea of a family and how family structures work. And then the third part was the protest. What does it mean to protest? How do we maintain a singular identity whilst also being part of a, of a group? Um, and so those are the three kind of threads that run through this book and then they're kind of networked to talk in and amongst each other. So that's kind of what I'll say about it and then I'll just get into some reading. Um, it's all pretty new, to be honest. I've kind of maintained quite a low profile when it comes to um, readings until like, the poems were set. So I don't like reading them knowing I'm going to change them in like a week. So now I can't change them. Um, <laughs> so this is it. Um, some of them don't have titles. We've been in Algiers for almost a year. Each afternoon, boys no older than me would wait by the fence. Above, shuttles of empty thunderheads cornered the desert heat. I stood there at five years old, looking through their ribs, their hands copper and exposed like mine. How I remember it, mademoiselle, mademoiselle, my mother bringing out wrapped bread, green olives, cut apples, pitchers of iced water. Pushed through the gaps. Take, take, take. Merci beaucoup, mademoiselle. Merci. That night, my father stood in the kitchen's small yellow, still, thieves, wild, perspiration clutching my mother's hair, her neck. She just kept on chopping. The next day, two boys returned, Mademoiselle, my father, the proud accountant in tight blue shorts, pointed the water hose right into their chests, bursting almost like ladders. Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle, she just kept on chopping. Um, and then I'll do. I'm kind of interested in time and how time works, hence the title Heritage um, Aesthetics. You kind of think about an identity is something that you inherit, I guess, and, and the way in which people perceive you, there's an inheritance to that as well. And so the book kind of fluctuates between the past, the present, but also thinking about the future. One of the things that I'm really interested in is that if you come from a minority group or a group in that, you know, it was part of the Commonwealth at one point, and your story hasn't really been told, you don't really have space to imagine the self. The, the self can't imagine. So what happens is someone else imagines the self for you. Um, and I think for marginalised groups in particular, and people who we just choose to ignore, um, that is really, really important to kind of take back some of that narrative. So you guys might know of a guy called Lawrence Dole, um, who wrote a book called The Elements of Cyprus in 1958, uh, part of the Dole brothers, and they were kind of Hellenophiles. And he's written the biggest book on Cyprus to date. And he was a racist, he was a propagandist, I actually think he was a spy. Um, but he went over there and he wrote this book. So one of the poems, I'm not going to read because it's too long, um, is talking back to the literatures of the 20th century and how they kind of cast an impression of what it meant to be a colonised group of, of people. Um, so I'm going to read you one called Futurist Primer um, that again looks at the idea of the future, the present and, and the past. Last night they broke into the confidence shop leaving nothing but mirrors. The whole time I was awake trying to fix my router. 
Today, I'm sipping Americanos with six new interns, pontificating on the stoicism of lifeguards who grew up in rural England with all the prospects of a stationary outlet. In a few hours, a man will walk down the street in Birmingham to drive a knife into a person he's never heard laugh. Violence only teaches us how to keep returning to it. In real life, we share a third of our DNA with mushrooms. Some facts need to be written down before they're believed. My landlord spends his holidays on a Cumbrian field with his wife who coincidentally happens to be my brother's landlord. There they hold each other inside a small blue tent after weeks of heavy rain. I imagine them laying over some part of a hundred million insects which constitute the majority of the world's biomass. How their gorgeous, slow lovemaking might sound to a swarm of abstaining termites, a single ant roving the near underworld with nothing but a crumb of honest soil. I think about the cost of living and how for now we're alive enough to fuck on top of the earth, our bodies fecund with unripe disease. In 40 years, my son will be updating his CV for a job that doesn't exist yet. I'll be sat like a bookmark at the kitchen table, stirring tea in an easy way, thinking about my mother and father, and the day's water was water. A soft voice lady with perfect posture will project onto the wall of my living room via a device fixed to the roof, hoping to sell me a brighter version of myself, saying something like, will keep the future in your sights. I'll decline, returning to the sofa, where I'll remember the greengrocer, the joys of his old Instagram account, full of organic kale and deals on kombucha. Then before I do anything else, I'll think, the penis really does not age well. <laughs> Alright, we'll do a fast one. Um, let's do... Let's do a faster one. Um, yeah, my weapons are working people. This is the kind of protest strand that I think runs through. So I wrote a lot of these actually, I wrote a lot of protest poems, but only two made the final cut um, during the George Floyd. Heat from my father's chest, North London parkland sweating like ice chocks. A cranium of thick black hair inflicting memories, smoking slats of anxiety. Tonight we're here to weigh up streets, demanding justice, as if each of my weapons are working people, each politician repatriating trauma. It all becomes political when my father's rejoinder. What I would add if I could hold him the way I do these words on a placard. I never could say exactly what I felt, man to man to woman, our love dragging what it was like to the head. Lines. I read another white, tell us to go back to where we were once alive, before the butcher's apron, a stint of bad science, and tabloids erect with military men, lofts loaded with records, your sweet granddaddy probably hated us, those golden oldies, union jacks, relics of a dirty haunting, how does a Luton fascist relax on Christmas day, follow that logic through from banter, when Tommy quipped, go suck your dad's brown dick at home when I told my father, he punched a hole through the bloody watercolours of his steak. I ran through Cable Street, past Churchill Stone, overseeing six rough sleepers under the lights. My brothers, today we're all fury, no amity, knuckles like hockey pucks, feral crows stuffed into rucksacks. I'm still looking for a place to park my mixed up blood. My son in my father's lap, the skin around his throat lacks almost an outline of St. Begita. I'm behind the museum on the road where philosophy overlooks itself. Proximate to my feet is the call to prayer. And isn't the future made up this way of people like us becoming the history of the way we try to breathe? Oh, yeah, should we hear a sister? Do you want a sister? Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this, this was one of those uh, sisters that really pissed me off actually. Um, it took me ages to kind of write and, and figure out. Um, it took me about four and a half months, and I kind of abandoned it, and then I went back and then I abandoned it again. So, in the end, stayed with it, and it, and it, made, the, um, it made the cut. It's called Float. The chance to be part of this happens briefly. My sun grows to edge where the ocean slips, roughly pointing towards a float. 
He asks me to rescue it from a future he can't see. Three slow steps in until I'm governed by cold, moving towards an unknown confluence. I'll say how I panicked, unmoored by my weight. They say the closer you get to time, the further it moves. For a brief second, I believed I could make a difference. Another cold thought splits my side. Salt clings, feels rough around my limits. Each wave dumping swept. I see my son's worry in the surge. Hear his asking rumble through the earth's bladder. I want to ask for more time. How can a body reverse in water? I say aloud, I don't think I'll make it. Seeing his profile plunge like a conch. As a boy, I took a brief diving course where I learned how oxygen turns starfish rough, drying them into land until a child discovers the cold of them, chucking what's left into a bucket. Over time, our colder selves arrive to find us struggling against the drift, asking for a cup of moonlight to sunny the meadows from our rougher years. Say I persevered, not wanting him to see me fail, even if for a brief second he lost sight of me, or I believed I drowned at sea. I'll stay repurposing my strongest lines. See the float reaching for my hand, the gap becoming less cold, reminding me the ocean is alive inside the world. It's brief to keep the retina saline, to not need a question, asking for little in return. The sea. It refuses to say why it keeps down the masthead, the ghost roughly the size of my son's waiting. I turn towards him roughly where I left, what's keeping me afloat? My work sees him dressing up for a life, rehearsing what I'll finally say, hill walking out the ocean, his float in hand, juddering from cold, I did it for you, I'll declare. If he ever asks where, if he ever asks where I was the whole time, then I'll keep my explanation brief. Roughly the way my father did during those colder years when I begged his hand to turn me calm. I'm looking across the foreshore. I can't see him anywhere. I had this to give, to say briefly. And then I'll read one more and then we'll get out of there. Um, done that one. Let's do um, one that one. I don't even know anything is in this book. I'll do a cross from here. Where I began, for argument's sake, let's call it love. Each day pinned to the next. My mother, when using my father's name, would know what to do with us. And him, far away in an unlit capital, already falling further into his glasses, our kitchen table, minus his rage, a column missing its figure, where I first said aloud father, or dad, or sir, or nation, to a blank seat, a white plate, one mottled prune, the severed leg of our cat. So let's say, for argument's sake, I was a good boy looking for my father, in songs or movies, or the house of my childhood, which burnt down the last day of summer. A whole family died. My mother saying it's fine for boys to feel terrible and ruined, alone in life which ends up infecting us all and God knows why. It's sod's law. We find ourselves whispering father into the side of a pillow. A boy's head cracked open, his ears leaking farther all over the canteen floor. Unswept crumbs, a mirror under the bed, two shot pheasants by the sink waiting for my mother. The day he returned, Father left my mouth differently. I started to declare words no longer mine, catchphrases dead inside their box, the meaning of father, never looked back to check I was still there. Over time, some words come close to disappearing, kept alive only by the people who repeat them, father, for argument's sake, let's call it love where I began.